Today I'm reviewing the Rockab Burst Pro, which is a claw grip mouse with optical switches, internal honeycomb pattern with kind of like a cool shine through RGB look to it. Inside the box, you get the mouse and a set of replacement feet. That's basically it. The mouse itself is a symmetrical, so ambidextrous as some would say, even though it doesn't have the buttons on the right side. So it's a symmetrical shape pretty much for claw grip. I guess if you have really small hands, you can palm it. Here it is compared to an XM1, just to give you an idea of the shapes. I've seen these two mice getting compared a lot online and I'm a huge fan of the XM1, so of course I wanted to give this one a shot. So I'm coming at it from the point of view of a XM1 fan and a claw grip user. On my scale, it comes in at 68, 69 grams and all of the holes and such are inside the mouse. They use sort of like a exoskeleton thing. So solid structure on the outside, lightweight inside, kind of giving you the best of both worlds. So on the mouse itself, you can see it has textured sides here, which help with grip a little bit. I think it's laser etched. Then on back here, it's got sort of this translucent plastic, which doesn't really have that amazing Rockat coating that you're used to. It kind of feels a little bit cheaper than normal. Same texture on the other side here. The buttons are showing a little bit of oil because I've been using it for the past couple of days, but it's definitely not as bad as like the actual XM1 or XM1R as far as showing fingerprints goes. So this mouse also has RGB that shines through the honeycomb pattern in the back. I think it's a cool idea. Don't really love the execution. But again, it might be someone's favorite implementation of RGB if they hate mice with holes in it and love RGB. Personally, not for me. Rocket tends to make really high quality stuff and this mouse is really no different. Feels great. The side buttons have a little bit of pre-travel and almost no post-travel. In use, the side buttons are really good. You don't notice any of the small amount of pre-travel and they feel really crispy. DVI button also feels really good. I like to use this button for things in game rather than just DPI. Um, but it's pretty tactile. I think that there's a real switch in there under there, which is great. The mouse wheel feels good, high quality, clicks feel good. Not super easy to press, not super hard, kind of perfect balance there. So that brings me to the main clicks, which in my opinion is the obvious sort of flaw or main downside of this mouse. They're using their new optical switches, which definitely sadly feel like first generation opticals. They have that weird sort of mushiness to them when they're not very tactile. Being as into switches as I am, uh, unfortunately this makes this mouse not really something that I'm drawn to using. I basically have the pick of the litter when it comes to using any switches that I want. I basically can replace switches in anything except mice with optical switches because they are sort of a new thing and these just don't pass the test as far as what it feels like to use. So that's just me though. Like I totally understand that if somebody was just burned by a mouse that's double clicking and they feel like they must buy optical switches in order to make sure that that never happens again. A lot of people who would be watching this video would have multiple mice and possibly know how to swap switches or wouldn't be afraid of a double clicking switch. That's ultimately something for you to decide, but in my opinion, these are just not good feeling. They just feel like a mush. And here's a sound test. And to give you an idea of the mush factor of the buttons, here is a Viper Mini with Razer's new switches. It's up to you to decide which sounds better, but the feeling is obviously better on the Viper. And then here is Omron 50Ms in an old XM1 original, which of course put both of those to absolute shame. Like that's just so gross. 
This has heat treated PTFE skates. They feel good. I don't know what the heat treating does, but I personally wouldn't really rush to replace these. I would wait until I was through these, through the replacements, and then get replacement skates. I don't know how much would be gained by spending the 10 bucks on getting replacement feet, so these are really great to see coming stock on mice. The mouse pad that's on here is an Artisan Raiden Mid, which is basically the fastest cloth mouse pad you can get, just to show the quality of the cable. Sadly, uh, it's pretty much a stick. Absolute contender for paracording. Just feels super bad. Um, in a bungee, it's fine, but again, if this is gonna be your main mouse, definitely worth a paracord, but not great. And for comparison, Viber Mini with a paracord that I made. Same distance. And the Viper Mini is a lighter mouse too, which should help it move more. There's also software, has all the basic functions, works fine. It's annoying that you have to use it, but once you set it up, it basically, you never need to touch it again. So totally not really worth anything more than a passing mention. As far as my kind of final thoughts and recommendation about this mouse, I would say it's not really worth the money. I believe it's 60 bucks, and I think that there's a ton of other mice that you can get that are better than this for $60. Especially with the Viper Mini being $20 the other day, I just can't imagine anything beating that as far as value goes. I know that the new XM1 is about the same price, and in my opinion beats this mouse in every possible category. With all that said, ultimately when I was gaming with the mouse, I didn't really notice the mouse itself, which is really important. As soon as you notice the mouse, it's basically dead in the water for me. The switches and the sound and the feeling and everything and the shape, coding, etc., all are totally passable. If this is the only mouse I had, I would be totally fine using it, but being someone who has probably 50 mice, this would not be a mouse that I would go back to or seek out basically ever. But if you are looking for something and you like this shape or you like Rock Hat and you really want something with optical switches, I think that this is basically the only sort of claw grip mouse that's kind of not FK shaped that has optical switches that you could go with. I still personally would recommend a Viper Mini Viper or Viper Ultimate over this. This mouse is definitely not for me, might be for you, but if I were recommending someone a mouse, I would not start here. I think if Rock Hat comes out with better switches or a new click design or something to just make these feel better, it would be easier to recommend, but at the current price and with how bad the main switches feel, I just can't in good faith recommend this. That all said, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in a the comment. Thanks so much to watching all the way to the end. If you liked the video, please hit that like button. If you want to see more like this, you can subscribe. If you have any questions on anything I didn't cover, anything I missed, or, or are looking for mouse recommendations, please feel free to leave a comment. Thanks so much. Peace.